We're making Daddy do it. Did it get unplugged? I don't know how. All right, can you go get Daddy? Can I zoom in a little bit more? He's right there. He's that white ste right white piece. So in today's video, we're back in Messy Maya's room to show you what happened with this tank and how we killed some fish while, of course, Daddy was out of town in Seattle. Never fails, you go out of town and you leave your fish in the hands of someone else. Someone like, I don't know, your six-year-old daughter. Things can happen when you go out of town with your aquarium. Quick note, I'm going out of town. I will be in Colorado talking to the Rocky Mountain Cichlid Association this weekend. Back on the road again. But anyway. So while I'm out of town, my daughter is left in charge of her wonderful F-35 by our friends at Fluval. It never fails when you go out of town, something could happen to your fish when you leave them in the hands of something else. This reminds me of the time when I went out to Yellowstone for two weeks and sadly my original OG Bose Monty Rainbow passed on to the next life while I was gone for two weeks. This is a little bit different. This is my daughter Maya's tank. My daughter Maya is the lover of the group. She's passionate and very emotional like her father. Unfortunately, she has not been hardened by my fish killing ways unlike her dad who's used to killing fish. So when a fish dies and my six year old daughter tank it greatly affects Maya as parents some of you all might know how this goes you may not fully ever get the entire story of what happened but in today's video we're going to try to unpack what just happened and killed these fish to educate you all on how it happened and how it can be avoided again and we're also going to add some new fish back into Maya's aquarium we don't have all the answers, but we do know Daddy comes home one day and Maya is freaking out. In fact, my wife told me she actually locked the door to her room because the dead fish was visible in the aquarium. She had a dead variatus platy, bright yellow and orange fish upside down. And clearly we are dramatizing my poor little six-year-old daughter. So my daughter's dramatized and I come in and I immediately check the plug. I did a video on this just the other week talking about how a disaster could have been avoided. Well, disaster was not avoided. This plug right here was unplugged. I don't know if it's because she's got the computer screen or what's up, but ultimately this power strip right here with everything was unplugged. But what happened? How'd they die? All right, I want to make a point about something here. Look, you can have the absolute best equipment in the world on your aquarium, but if the best equipment in the world isn't plugged in, it's not doing you any good. So I want to point out some of the possible points of failure as well as something new from our friends at Fluball. Check it out. First things first, we go down here. We've got this filter right here. Uh, this filter was unplugged, okay? These easily can be uh, turned on and off. You can see how that works right there. This filter was off additionally up here the heater was off, but I want to make a point about something that did not kill the fish, but I think is pretty cool, and that is these new lights right here. A quick note on the lights on this tank. This is actually the Planted Nano light from our friends at Fluval. I don't talk about products unless I've used them for at least two months. I've been using these lights since Christmas here, and I do want to give them some cred on some product improvements over the previous model. So first, these Nano lights are structurally more sound. You can see the bracket here that actually pulls out both here and here. This mount actually is the most marked improvement, though, because this has a little thumb screw. You can attach it to the back of your tank easier. The previous model, how shall I say this? wasn't exactly dustin proof uh this right here slipped down into a fitting that was adhered with adhesive to the side of the tank which had been prone to failure additionally i was never really a fan of this overly sensitive button here which you can use uh to push both on and off and kind of like dim the light here fluval has improved that by removing that all together and making a free app for more customizable controls as well as where you can dial up the spectral settings to you want it also comes with a couple of presets and is bluetooth but more importantly than that though they actually made the lights better themselves. The bulbs are better. And while I haven't done any sort of par testing, I have used this light for almost three months and I've seen how it has improved the plant growth. And that's what we're after, folks. We're after better plant growth. Speaking of plants, I do want to point out the plants that I am growing underneath this light right here. That is Java moss, obviously easy to grow, but also Busa flandra. Now look, I'm using hardy plants in this tank for a reason because I don't want to have to mess with it. I also want to have the plants in there as a secondary filtering mechanism. Here's the rub. Okay, check this out. When the filter goes down in the aquarium, this is a small aquarium, it had two fish in it. I had, 
what I consider to be a moderate to above average plant load in there. So the filter goes down, we no longer have that mechanical filtration, but we have some biological filtration by the plant. So, filters off, I believe that the two fish combined with the decent plant load that I have in this aquarium will make it easy for the fish to handle this ride while they're not having mechanical filtration, the biological filtration is less, but it's still present with the heavy amount of plants that I have in here, okay? So the filter being off, check. We're probably thinking that that is not what killed the fish. Let's talk about the heater. We'll go back to the Amazon real quick with the heater. Stick with me, trust me. Okay, so when I was in Peru and I was down in the back of the boat in the Amazon, we always made sure we kept the fish in the shade because any sort of temperature swings was no good for them. Folks, I've said it before and I will say it again. Of all the pieces of equipment that can fail and kill your entire tank, it is the heater is my numero uno number one thing that can mess up your tank the worst. Why? If you have a faulty cheap generic heater, your heater sticks on, it cooks your tank. Drop me a comment if you've had a heater stick on you before. It's the worst. Your temperatures rise, all your fish get baked, or your heater fails and the temperature drops. And that is exactly what I am hypothesizing happened with my daughter's tank while I was out of town. Let's talk about this heater. Look, these are great heaters, all right? This is an M50. I got M1, I got M150s, 300s. Uh, this is just the 50 right here. It's actually fully submersible by our friends at Fubo. I'm running probably over a dozen of these out in the greenhouse combined with also their uh, E-series heater. Yeah, look, they make a good heater. But the bottom line is this. The heater can be the best heater in the world, but that sucker's unplugged. It's no bueno. I think that this heater got unplugged and that is what caused the temperature to swing in this tank. It's near a window. The room got cold. The tank got cold. The fish got cold. The fish died. Now we're adding a new fish. Parents, fish tank people, let this be a lesson to you. Let's say you got an aquarium and you've got two fish in it. One of the fish dies. First thing you do is figure out what killed that fish. Second thing you do is you do a nice water change. I don't know, 30, 40, 50%. Do what's fancy for you. Now, in this scenario, everybody died. All the fish were dead. Daughters screaming, yelling. Everything was bad news. So what do you do? I did a massive water change in this tank, right? You can see the clip here. I'm doing about a 90% water change. I don't recommend doing that big of water changes unless you have everybody dead. There was nothing to worry about in this tank. Do a nice big water change. You don't really have to worry about the water parameter swimming because there ain't nobody alive in this tank. So we did a massive water change. Then what happened? I go to Myers with my daughter. Myers, as you well know, is the birthplace of Dustin and his aquarium hobby. Yeah, their fish tanks look terrible, but that's where Dusty got started. Mom used to be getting groceries. Dusty used to be looking at the fish. I go there with Meyer. I, I go to Meyer with Maya. What does Maya want to do? Maya wants to buy a betta fish. Now look, the tank was just pronounced dead a couple of days ago, and now Maya wants to buy a betta fish. So we bought a betta fish. But here's a pro tip for you, and I think that... Quite frankly, any life that I give this better would be better than this fish. You can see the clip here. This fish is swimming in its own feces. It's in bad shape, okay? So what did I do? I did about a, I don't know, a third 40% water change on the actual container itself because I don't trust this tank yet. I've done a 90% water change. I'm gonna let this sucker run for a couple days. Now, in the meantime, I'm also doing water changes on the betta. My daughter and your kids probably always want to put the fish immediately into the aquarium. That's no bueno. The fish tank hasn't had time to reset. So I'm doing water changes on this tiny little cup that the betta is in. But here's a pro tip for you that I think is super valuable and that is this, one of the bulletproof plants. Please note the timetable on here. This tank was, quote, pronounced dead on last Friday. Saturday, I did a full 90% water change, drain and fill, scooped out some of the bad stuff. 90% water change, then I'm letting it sit for one, two, three days, even though it's already got some plants and I'm letting it sit for three days just to make sure everything is cool before I add this new betta fish. Don't rush it, take your time. But now it's time to add the betta fish. I do wanna show you the pro tip that I've done here and I love this plant. One of the bulletproof plants, I wanna talk about the hornwort that I added in here. You can see the clip here. I add hornwort to any fish that are, any fish, shrimp or whatever that I'm uh, trying to remove extra ammonia from. This poor betta right here was swimming around in his own feces. I think he likes the hornwort in there, although it freaked my eyes. Why are the fish? He's daddy, daddy. He's totally fine. He has been floating in here for, I don't know, probably about an hour. We're about to let him go, but I want to show you how I dump fish into the aquarium because you don't want any of that nasty water in there. We're rolling. So I'm going to top the tank off with water that's been sitting out for a good long time. Now, folks, for your moment of zen, 
Andrew behind the camera for a change. The crown tail betta. There was a betta named Reddy that died. This guy hopefully is ready. This has been sitting in there. Temps are about the same, so I feel good about this. Poor guy's going in this. Crown tail betta comes out here. Now look, you never, ever, 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 ever want to put the water from the container your fish came from into your aquarium if you can avoid it. So I'm gonna do it like this. People have busted my chops about not having a net before. Dusty got a net. Now look at how I packed this here though. This is important. I'm using a bunch of duckweed. This duckweed is grown. I actually did not use that much duckweed because I knew this fish was staying. I have the duckweed. I have the hornwort in here. This is the same temp as I can tell of the other, uh, of the other tank. So I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna throw this down in here and then I'm gonna slowly pour all this nasty poop water. I'm gonna try not to get duckweed in the tank, but I'm gonna pour all this water out as best as I can into here. Yep, and there goes the fish. So now I got the fish. Now, I don't really wanna touch the fish, but I don't wanna get all this fish poop in the net. Follow me up here like this, and I'm just gonna flick the fish into the tank right here, and this is your moment of zen. Get ready, folks. And he is into the aquarium. Oh, oh right into the hole, respect. And take a chill, brother. And there's how we're looking, folks. Do me a favor, drop me a comment on how your kids have accidentally killed fish. Hey, over on Instagram, I was actually giving away free plants for people that had the greatest comments of how their fish got killed. So drop me a comment down there, hit the notification button and the subscribe button, and we'll talk to you manana. Tank on. Later.